Hello, welcome to Maths with J. So we want to find a to the power of 5 for this 2 by 2 matrix A. And because we want to use the Cayley Hamilton theorem, so let's just remind ourselves of the characteristic equation for this matrix, which would find the eigenvalues for us. So there's the general characteristic equation. You can see it involves the trace of a matrix and the determinant of a matrix. And the lambdas here are the, um, the eigenvalues. So we don't actually need the eigenvalues here, but it's the equation that we're after because we're going to see that this equation gives us the, uh, the equation that we want. So let's just uh, put in the numbers. So the trace of A is the sum of the elements on the main diagonal. So that's 5 plus 2. And the determinant, so that's going to be 5 times 2 minus negative 3 times negative 6 and that all equals 0. So the characteristic equation for this particular matrix is lambda squared minus 7 lambda minus 8 equals 0. So in another video we've already seen how we can use that um, equation to find the eigenvalues of the matrix, but that's not what we actually want to do here. Here we want to use the Cayley Hamilton theorem, and that tells us that a matrix is a solution of its own characteristic equation. So, what that means is that we can write down instead of lambda a, so we've got a squared, that's the matrix a squared, minus, and again we're going to replace lambda by a, so minus 7 times a. And because this is a matrix equation, we can't just leave the 8 on its own, so it does need to multiply the relevant identity matrix, and that's equal to 0. Some of you may write the identity matrix with a little 2 like that, because we've got a 2 by 2 matrix. So however you write it, what I mean by I is this, the identity matrix. So that is what we're going to be using here. And it's easier to use if we make a squared subject. So the matrix a squared is 7a plus 8i, simply adding 7a and 8i to both sides. Now in this question, we want to calculate a to the power of 5. So there are different ways of thinking about this. One way would be to multiply both sides of this equation by a to find a cubed, and then to multiply both sides by a again to find a to the power of fourth, and so on. But I think it's actually easier to start off by finding a to the power of four by squaring both sides of this equation. So let's uh, tidy this up a bit and start to do that. Right, that's better. So now we're going to write down a to the power of 4, because once we've done that, it will be easy to multiply by a to get a to the power of 5. Right, so a to the power of 4 is a squared squared. And we've just worked out that a squared is 7a plus 8i. And we're going to be squaring that. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to see that by simplifying this, we're going to find that a to the power of 4 can be written as something times a plus something times i. And then, one stage further, our final answer, when we work out a to the power of 5, we'll also find that a to the power of 5 can be written as something times a plus something times i. In fact, a to the power of anything can be written in that way. Right, so let's see how and why that works. So if we square this out, we're going to have 7 sevens 49, so that's 49a squared. And then we've got 7a multiplied by 8i twice, so that's going to be 112. And here we're going to have a times i, well the identity matrix multiplying anything will leave it the same, so it's still going to be a, no need for the i there as well. And then 8 squared, 64, so we've got 64 times i squared, and that's the same as i. OK, and then we can replace that a squared by 7a plus 8i. 
So you can see now why it is that each time we do this process, a matrix to any power, well, matrix A to any power, can be written as something times A plus something times I. Right, so let's just simplify this. So we've got 343 A and 392 I, leaving the other two terms at the end. And then we can simplify. So we're going to have 455 A and 456 I. So we've written a to the power of 4 as something times a and something times i. Okay, and now we want to find, for our final art, so we're trying to find a to the power of 5, and that's equal to a times a to the power of 4. So using our previous answer, multiplying by a, we've got 455a squared and 456 a. And again, we've got an a squared, so we replace that by 7a plus 8i. So we're nearly there. You can see that all we've got left is something times a and something times i. So the numbers just get a bit bigger, don't they? So we've got 3,185a. 3640i and we've still got the 456a at the end there and then combining those we get 3641a and 3640a so there we have used the Cayley-Hamilton theorem to simplify a to the power of 5 so that it's simply a number multiplying the matrix A plus a number times the matrix I. So that's much easier to do than matrix multiplication. So now we finally are ready to put the, matrix, the matrices in the A and the I. And I think we need a bit more space. Right, so now we can put in the matrices, so we've got 3,641 multiplying the matrix A. So this is the first time we're actually writing the matrix in. Up until now, we've been able to do all the calculations without actually doing, without actually putting the matrices in. And then the identity matrix at the end, so 1, 0, 0, 1. Right, so how shall we do this? Let, let's do it all as one big matrix. It'll be easier, won't it? So 3,641 multiplied by 5. So that's going to be 18,205. And then we're adding on 3,640 multiplied by 1. So that's 3,640. And then we're going to have a negative number. So we're now multiplying 3,641 by negative 3. So that's minus 10,923. And 3,640 times 0 is just 0. So that's all we've got there. And then looking at the second row, we're multiplying 3,641 by negative 6. So that's negative 21,846. And we get nothing by nothing from the second matrix. And then we have got 3,641 multiplied by 2. So that's 7,282. And then we're adding on 3,640 multiplied by 1. So just a bit of addition. And we're there. So our final answer is 21,845. And then this number stays the same. So minus 21,846. This one stays as it was. So minus 10,923. And then adding together the last two numbers, we get 10,922. Done.
So that's the answer for a to the power of 5. But you can see, I hope, that you would be able to work out a to the power of any whole number. It's also worth bearing in mind that we could take our a squared formula and think of it as some... We could write it like this. a to the power of n must be equal to... What I'm doing is I'm multiplying through by a to the power of n minus 2. So that must be equal to 7 times a to the power of n minus 1 plus 8 a to the power of n minus 2. So that's really generalizing. So in this particular case, we could have worked out a to the power of 5 as 7 times a to the power of 4 plus 8 times a to the power of 3. And we could have worked out a cubed and then gone on and worked out a to the power of 4. We didn't actually choose to do it that way, but if you'd like to have a go, hopefully you'll get the, the same final answer for a to the power of 5.